muchos colombianos y venezolanos, todo hecho en tu casa, con sabor zuliano y calor humano. Los quesos en casa tienen vitaminas rápidos de hacer en cualquier cocina. Tan fácil como pegar mandarinas Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor A lo que su hermano También que opera Costeño en matera, paipa, palmisuria Gaspa, doble y crema Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Hi everyone, welcome to my cha uh, YouTube channel Doctor Quesero TV And to my show Ask the Cheese Doctor This is the English version of my Spanish program uh, One hour ago And, but it's done every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. New Zealand time, okay? Uh, the idea, as always, is teach you guys how to learn how to make cheese, but it, this program is dedicated for people who speaks English and other languages, which, in, um, which Spanish is not the, um, the first language. So um, today we're going to speak about homogenized, homogenization. We're going to talk about the homogenized milk. When we make cheese, the idea, the, 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 the ideal scenario, <coughs> or the ideal case scenario is with, to make cheese with non-homogenized milk. But sometimes we use this type of milk. Uh, for example, when we, when we use goat milk and when we use sheep milk, these milks are, the goat milk is partially homogenized, but the sheep milk is fully homogenized. So how do we make cheeses with this type of milk? This is how I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna teach you what to do. Um, we have to take we have to um, um, have special care for this type of milk because they are homogenized and the the um, the, the curd are a little bit um, more delicate, so we have to handle it with a little with special care. Okay. Um, by the way, happy New Year to everyone. Um, we are now 18,348 subscribers in my YouTube channel. Thank you to you all. Without you, we wouldn't have any show. And that's for sure. I really appreciate all the support. And if you also want to support us in, in, by joining the channel, uh, you can do it <coughs> in, the, in, the, in the support category. It's Apoyo in Spanish. And if you also want to support us in Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash TV, and you can give a small support, a, a, sm a small uh, amount. With, this, with your support, we will be able to make more videos like this, more programs like this one, um, because we use this money. I mean, we have to pay for all these platforms and stuff. And the idea is with your support, we use it and you guys can have more content, more content and learn more about the cheese making process. OK, if you also want to um, take my my um, cheese making course for beginners, this is in five languages. This is in Spanish, Spanish because uh, I, I speak in Spanish in the videos because Spanish is my first language, but I also have the video captions in English, Chinese, Arabic, and Hindi. Okay, so four more languages if you want if you want to learn how to make cheese. Okay, okay, let's go with the presentation. As I said, the program always lasts half a half an hour, and after the presentation, I'm going to answer. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to speak for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then the last 10. 15 minute, minutes, uh, I'm going to answer all the questions from the audience. I have heap of questions that people from the channel has asked me, and I didn't, I don't have the time to answer them, so I just do it here. Okay, and, but if you have your question, you have priority, because you are attending the show, and you will have my priority. Uh, by the way, I ask I, my apologies for the platform. If you see this logo here that I have here, <coughs> um, uh, here, not here, in this. This logo, 
is the new platform. It, it's my, it was my old platform because the one that I was using, the new one, cl uh, collapsed and it doesn't show my camera. Uh, I, I don't know. I just have to make a complaint. And, but anyway, let's go with the presentation and let's start with the show. So you guys can... Okay, here we are. Okay, by the way, if the audio is all right, I would like your feedback. <clears throat> okay, let's go. I'm gonna change my computer soon. Okay, here we are. Okay. Let's see when this start. Okay, this is program number 32. Gee, we have 32 programs, almost a year. Homogenation in milk. Well, if you, as I said, if you want to um, support us in the channel, just join, go, go to my YouTube channel and click on the join um, button and you will be able to support us, okay? In this category. This category are not, are not updated. The, the price is 3.99, which is nothing. It's one coffee uh, a month with, because you pay this a month. So I reckon one coffee is not a biggie for anyone. 3.99. Okay. Okay. Let's start. As I said, we're going to speak about homogenized milk. When we make cheese, the, the, um, the most important thing when we make cheese is the milk because the milk... <coughs> Without milk, we don't have any cheese. So when we see the milk, the milk is white. It can come from cows, from sheep, goats, camels, horses. It doesn't matter the source. Each, cow, each milk has proteins, has lactose, has um, uh, fat, and... and Minerals, okay? So um, the idea is when we make cheese, we use, in general, we use three types of milk. We use um, cow's milk, we, we use goat milk, and sheep milk. But let's talk about the milk first. The milk, when we see the milk, the milk is white, okay? Our milk is white. And from the um, electric point of view, in all the fat globules and the lactose and the casein and the protein, which is the casein uh, of the milk, they are floating each other, but they don't attract each other because they, they, they have negative ions that make them repel each other. And that's the reason they don't, they don't coagulate and the milk is not coagulated. So, um, and when we are making, when we see the milk, we have, Two phases, the dispersed phase, which is, is, the, is the fat globules, and the continued phase, which is the water or the aqueous phase, that have the casein, the minerals, and the water. As I said before, all of them are, um, all the, the fat, the casein, out into a global called micelle. Okay, the, the, it, it, this is called missile, but um, this is in another topic. But anyway, um, so the milk is like this. If you watch the milk by eye, you see it white. And the white color of the milk is, is, is due to the refraction of the light. Okay, when, if we have 1000 um, resolution, if we, if we, if we zoom it 1,000 times, it's going to look like this. You're going to see all these yellow spots on the milk, which is the fat globules. And if you zoom it 10,000 times, you're going to see the fat globules, which is are the yellow ones or the orange ones, and this yellow, these spots, which is the casein or the protein of the milk. Okay? And when the milk coagulates, all the casein 
all the and 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 the fact that they just stuck together and um the milk becomes coagulated okay but why the milk i mean when we when we are making when we are making cheese and in general we use homogenized milk we know that the milk is non-homogenized because we see a cream floating on the top. Why does this cream is formed? It is formed because I told you before that all the particles were interacting and repelling each other, right? Because of the electric charge that they have, the, these negative ions and stuff. So this movement of, the, um, of these particles produce a friction. And this friction makes the milk to go to the top. Okay, so when we are going to the supermarket and we see this and we have a look to the milk and see the, the, this layer of fat, sometimes people don't like it. So the, the, the people from the industry, they created a mechanism to avoid this layer of fat to become on the top of, the, of each container. And they do it through homogene, homogenization. So, the scope of the homogenization is to reduce the size of these globules to prevent them from floating. Correct? So, um, so, but how do we homogenize the milk? Homogenize means to apply a very strong load to the milk, okay, to compress the milk and make it pass through a membrane. And I'm going to show you in a, in a, in a, in a little while, okay? how it's going to, how, how's, the, how's the process, okay? But when we use homogenized milk, we, on, we, um, we only will be able to make cheeses like um, fresh cheeses, okay? We'll, we, if we use homogenized milk, we won't be able to make any pasta filata cheese. When I mean, what, what I mean by pasta filata cheese is string cheeses like mozzarella, like um, provolone, like um, que Colombian cream cheese, like queso de mano, Venezuelan queso de mano, like Oaxaca from Mexico, okay? All the pasta filata cheese, escamorza, um, um, cacio cavallo, all this, all this, cheeses that come from pasta filata cheeses, you, we won't be able to, uh, to make it if we use homogenized milk. To make this type of cheeses that I've told you before, we will need non-homogenized milk. But our scope today is homogenization. So when we make homogenization, we will be able to make cheeses like Emmental, cheddar, um, we could make cheddar, we could make cheddar. Um, blue cheeses are excellent with homogen uh, homogenized milk, okay? Uh, if we're making Roquefort cheese, we use sheep milk, and the sheep milk is fully homogenized, and it gives it a very delicate texture. Of course, we have, as I said, we have to handle the curd a little bit, um, um, with more, a little bit more uh, careful. Okay. So, as I said, homogenization is well, we have we have the 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 the, the, the milk correct, right? and the fat global has the original size. When we apply the pressure, the milk passes through a membrane and they, all the casein passes through the membrane, all the fat globules, etc., and they become smaller. And after the, after the milk passes through the membrane, they, tar, they start to reaccommodate, they start to, uh, to, re, to rearrange. Okay, they start to rearrange, and but the structure is different from the beginning. Therefore, this structure is weaker. Okay, the fat globules um, attach with the um, along with the casein and with the whey. They mix all together and they form a new structure. Of course, it is weaker, and therefore, um, when the by by having the fat globules. In a, in a smaller um, size, the frictions around them is less. 
by being by, by having less friction, the, the these fat globules will not go to the surface. Okay, and will they, they will not accumulate on the surface. Okay, um, the new fat globules. Okay, the new fat globules will behave like pseudo proteins. This is and they call pseudo proteins because they mix together and they, as I said, they make a new arrangement. When the milk is non-homogenized, imagine it like, like a B structure, like a B, yeah, yeah like, like a B structure, where all the protein is the structure and the inside, which is the honey, is the fat. This is more or less the structure. Just, um, when they pass it through the membrane, it will, re it will rearrange. And, um, and this new structure is what we call pseudoprotein. So, mechanically, we put the milk here and we apply the pressure, okay? We apply the pressure and the milk passes through the membrane. This is the membrane here. This is the membrane here. And the milk passes through here. Of course, if you see the fat globules are bigger here. When they pass it through the membrane, they become smaller. This is more or less the process of homogenizing the milk okay now when we make cheese <clears throat> when we make cheese we um, and we use homogenized milk or homogenized milk it will have effects on cheese making okay um the uh, too much processing time okay to uh, homogenize the milk is very expensive so um we don't use homogenize. I mean, we don't, as a cheesemaker, we don't have an homogenizer in, in, the, in, the, in the industry. We buy the milk already homogenized. That's why, for example, we use sheep milk, which is naturally homogenized. We don't have to homogenize it. Or if we want to use homogenized milk, we buy it in the supermarket and problem solved. But we don't homogenize milk in the, in the factory because it's too complicated and it's too expensive. Okay, and when we homogenize the milk, we expose the fat globules to more enzymes, and this will have effect in in the lipolysis. The lipolysis is the change of the flavor into the cheese. Okay, when we use homogenized milk, the cheeses will be whiter, will be paler. Okay, and the texture will be softer. And if we are using homogenized milk. And once the milk is coagulated, after, um, by when cutting the milk, sorry, when cutting the curd, you, the curd will become brittle. Okay, so uh, it's going to be much more delicate. We have to make the holes. The, 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 uh, we have to cut bigger. Instead of uh, when we use non-homogenized milk, we normally or we usually cut at 12, 15 mils. If we are using um, Homogenized milk, we have to cut bigger. We have to cut 20 mils, 25 mils, even 50 mils. It depends on the of the recipe that you guys are using. Okay. Homogenized milk is used to um, to make blue vein cheeses. It's excellent for blue vein cheeses. I will say, and, and I and when we use um, homogenized milk, we have less lubrication when stretching the curd. Therefore, when we use Homogenized milk, we won't be able to get pasta filata cheeses because of the lack of lubrication on the um, on the casein on the on the casein um, fibers. There is not uh, a very low lubrication between them. Um, this is um, chemically uh, talking, right? Um, but but um, let's take it out of the scope for now. Um, I suggest, I strongly suggest when we are using homogenized milk, use calcium chloride, okay? The, way, the dose for calcium chloride is um, half a milliliter per liter, which means if you, if you are guys are making 50 liters of milk, you're gonna need 25 milliliters of calcium chloride, okay? Half a milliliter of calcium chloride per liter of milk. And the concentration of the calcium chloride should be um, 30%, okay? 
Okay, this is um, the presentation for now. Next program, I'm going to speak about small cheeses, okay? So be tuned and see you next week. And let's answer some questions. This is going as, ah, as, as, as I said, if you want to, if you want to take my, my English course, I'm going to give you the link. Of course, the link is in English. Uh, I have it here. And let's go answer some questions before I put the link. Oh, after I put the link. Uh, here it is. Okay. This is the link. Have a look. Okay. My apologies uh, again because I'm only streaming through YouTube because the rest stream platform just um, collapsed and it doesn't show my it doesn't show the camera. I don't know what happened. So my apologies. I know I usually stream in YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram and and Twitter, but now we have this problem. Okay, um, let's answer some questions. If you guys, I see that it's people connected. Um, if you guys want to answer, uh, want to ask me something, I'm keen to help you out. Um, I would be delighted to know you or to meet you. Um, just let me know. If you want to make a comment, you're more than welcome. Okay, but anyway, I'm going to ask this question that I have here and then we'll leave. Okay, we have... 10, uh, 10 more minutes. Okay. Um, Jesus Marino asking, what is the proteolysis? Proteolysis, Jesus, is, is, a, is a process when, the, when we are making cheese, we coagulate the milk, right? After coagulating, Manal, Manal, Happy New Year. How are you? Happy New Year. Welcome to my show, as always. Um, when we are coagulating the milk, we usually, after coagulating the milk, we cut the curd, correct? Oh, um, and when we cut it, the curd starts to expel away. This expel of the whey is what we call synergesis. But it lasts, it's not, I mean, it's a rate of, of whey expelling. When we are making cheese, um, we expel after the cutting, the synergesis can be bigger or smaller, can be the rate of expelling can be higher or lower, but it will depend on several factors. One of the most important factors that the um, synergesis um, varies is temperature. Okay. Also, if we shake this, if we stir if we stir the vat when we are making the cheese after cutting, if we stir, stirring by stirring um, affects synergies as well, because stirring move all the particles and they clash between each other and they expel more whey. So, by stirring and controlling the temperature are the two folks, the two factors that are the most important two factors that uh, affect synergies. And synergies doesn't finish after pressing, okay? Um, the next day, the cheese will carry on expelling whey because synergesis is still carry on. So if we want to stop synergesis after making a cheese, we have to cool it, okay? Cool it at four degrees and the synergesis will stop. Some cheese makers, when they're making cheese, what they do is because synergesis, uh, um, synergesis is, um, is lost for the cheese maker, because the cheese will expel whey and, it'll, and it'll, it will wait less. So the idea is um, when we are making a cheese and the cheese is small and packed, we, so cheese maker, what, what, what cheese makers do is um, they put it into the fridge to stop the synergies and the whey won't come out. So they don't lose whey. Um, in this case, the cheese can be sold at the price that they are offering, okay? And, and, and the amount of kilos that they are, or the amount of grams that they are offering will not be affected because the cheese will not, weigh, will not lose water. Therefore, the, um, the, um, the cheese will weigh what is in the, in the, in the stamp, correct? 
So um, if you want if you want to make cheese and you want to stop the synergies, put into the fridge in the early stage. And then once they once once you give it to the client, well, okay, if he explains away, well, that's his problem. Okay. Okay, let's go with the other question. Um, it says here, excellent channel. I have several doubts. If I made a mistake, uh, sorry, uh, if I don't make a mistake, at 35 or 37 degrees Celsius, we have to add rennet to the milk. Why it is this temperature? Well, um, your name is Alex. Okay. Look, um, when we use, I noticed that you don't have a lot of knowledge in cheesemaker, but doesn't matter. That's why you are here. And I'm very pleased to tell to help you out. We are heating the milk at the temperature. When we are making cheese, we know, we usually make cheese with pasteurized milk. Okay. Um, when we use pasteurized milk, we don't have lactic bacteria. Okay, we don't have cultures. So we have to put the cultures back again. And we have to heat the milk at the cultures temperature if we are using. And we have two types of cultures. We have mesophilic cultures and thermophilic cultures. If we are using mesophilic culture, we have to heat the milk at the temperature of the mesophilic culture ones. If we are using thermophilic culture, we have to heat the milk at their temperature. Both type of culture use different type of temperatures. Mesophilic cultures like low temperatures, thermophilic ones like higher temperatures. So if you are using mesophilic, you have to heat the milk at the, at the mesophilic culture temperature. And the same with thermophilic ones. You don't have to have, you don't have to go 35. 37 flat, you can play with a ranch. Mesophilic, use a ranch of temperature between 29 and 35. This is the ideal temperature, but it doesn't mean that you can heat at 39. You can heat also at 39. But after 40, the, the, um, the mesophilic die. Uh, on the other hand, thermophilic cultures, they like high temperature. So you, they, they like above 40 degrees. 40 up to 49 degrees, even I would say 50 degrees. Okay, but after 50 degrees, they die. So um, you have to hit the meal between these parameters. Some, several cultures, they like more, they like 45, they reproduce better at 45, and, and produce the rate of acid production is higher at, at higher temperatures. For example, I have noticed that when I use thermophilic ones, is when I use Streptococcus thermophilus, if I heat at 40 degrees, they produce acid. But I, if I heat at 45 degrees, they produce the rate of produ acid production is higher. So it depends what I want. So the cheese maker can, can play with it. Okay. Okay. I have a question from, from Manel. Let me see. When I put calcium chloride 30%, it is poured pure or dissolved in water. I, you can put it, if it is dissolved in 30% solution, you can put it pure, doesn't matter. You put the, grab a, tis, a, a, a tis, tablespoon or whatever the, the amount or, or, a, or a small jar that has measurements on it, and you can put it pure. You don't have to dissolve it with water. And you can put it as well with the, with the milk, with the cold, milk cold. With, with, you can put it with the milk cold. You don't have to heat the milk to put the calcium chloride. You can put it cold. Doesn't matter. Okay. As long as you put, because what you're what you're doing by adding calcium chloride is replacing the lost calcium, okay, from the pasteurization. So you can put it with the milk cold. Doesn't matter. As long as you put it. Okay. I make uh, I'm making cheese now, and I put it with the milk cold. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, well, it's 11, um, as I said, the program is lasting now half an hour because uh, I made a survey and people voted and they want, they wanted the, a shorter program. For me, it's okay. Uh, if you want a longer program, 
just let me know in the comments and I will consider it and we have to look, okay? Um, well, um, I didn't have time to answer all the questions. Um, I'm going to answer one more. Let me see. Uh, it says here, from Mexico, Gabby Gonzalez. She should come to the English pro, to the Spanish program, but anyway. Hi, doctor. My greeting from Mexico. Can you tell me if we have white walks and where can I find it? Well, wax comes from paraffin. Um, paraffin is normally, is usually white because it comes from the cans. What people do or, or the people that sell the wax, they just dyed it with powders and stuff. They use red powder or black powder or yellow powder. And, they, and that's the reason the, the color of the wax is yellow, red, or, or, or black. If you want to use normal paraffin, it's all right. You can use it. But it doesn't, it's not totally white. It will become a, a little bit transparent because uh, I don't think it's going to be, it's going to give a good look to the cheese. But if you want to do it, okay, no problem. As, as I said, you are uh, when we make cheese, we're making art, and you are the artist. So give it a try. Doesn't matter. Your worst case scenario is that the cheese don't look good. It doesn't look all right, and you can take the the, the wax out and wrap and wax it again. So don't worry about it. Make the make uh, make the the. Um, Give it a try, okay? Make the exercise, and you'll see, okay? Okay, thanks for coming, guys. Uh, see you next week. Next week, we're going to speak about the um, um, smoke, smoke cheese, okay? And spread the voice. As I said, I put the link of the um, cheese making course. It's here. I'm going to put it again, just in case if you want to have it, okay? This is in English. Have a look. You can pay the monthly payment, doesn't matter. And by joining the, the course, you will be part of our community and you will interact with all cheesemakers around the world or all your students, including me and, and my team. Um, if you have any doubt, we will answer it then. I mean, this is a program that never ends. This program uh, will help you out to make cheese. And if you have a, pro a problem in your, in your journey, and you are you have a sanitizing problem, you can come to the to the Facebook group, ask the question, and we will help you. No cost. Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming and see you next week. And as I always say, is cheese because life without cheese is like a love without a kiss. See you next week. Okay. Take care. <clears throat>